So I'm going to try to make this cohesive. <laughs> um, I was chatting on Messenger with one of my friends from a group. Uh, we're both MBTI type INFJ. And we are... Uh, the INFJ community, often we refer to ourselves as unicorns or um, aliens because we feel like we don't fit. Um, so she said, we're unicorns in a world that wants us to be horses and we can't be horses. You know, and I was like, you're right. Like, I've tried my whole life to be a horse. Been told my whole life how I'm not normal. I'm not right. There's something wrong with me, you know? And looked around and seen people running together and wondering why I don't get to run with them. Because unicorns don't run with the horses. They don't. Because they're unicorns. Now we all know unicorns don't really exist. But let's say for the sake of this that they do. Her whole life. Wanting to be like the horses because being a unicorn is lonely. You know, um, it, it is because people don't think like you. Um, they don't see the world like you do. They see the world as a horse, not a unicorn. And, you know, lots of people will say stuff like, Oh, I'm looking for my unicorn. But when they meet a unicorn, they're expecting the unicorn to just be a majestic horse. But it's not. It's a whole other species. You know, yes, it looks very similar. Yes, you can have children with it. You know, like, you know, like that is possible. Because, again, unicorns don't really exist. But if they did, I would imagine a horse could mate with a unicorn. But since this is a hypothetical, yes. They are very hor They are horse-like enough to where you can live happily with one. But if you expect them to be a horse, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be unhappy. You have to embrace what makes the unicorn a unicorn. Um, now, some INFJ people are really good at the door slam. When you've been door slammed, you are dead to that person. So I would consider it like um, they speared you. Mentally, they hit you with that horn. You are gone. Um, if they see you, you are invisible. Like, it is, it is a whole thing. Like, the INFJ door slam is, is famous amongst the community. Um, I am not really good at it. it. It takes me a long time to get to the point where I will door slam somebody. And even at times when I have basically cut them out in what would be considered a door slam, there's a certain point where I might let them back in. They are not forever cut. Like my ex-husband got door slammed a couple of times by me, but it was not a true door slam because at the end of the day, you know, I don't stop loving somebody 
who I've ever loved. If I love you at any point in my life, I still love you. My love does not die. My love does not turn to hate. The only reason somebody I've ever loved is not in my life is either by their choice or because I eventually chose my own mental health over allowing them into my life. Um, I can only think of one person that is truly door slammed. But if they sent me an email and um, if they sent me an email, I would, I would be like, okay, I can't just delete this and not read it. And if I read it and I felt like I could help them somehow, the part of me that just simply cares because they're a human being. Like if, even if somebody sent me an email on accident and I didn't know them, if I felt like, hey, I can help this person, I care. Um, that, I think that's part of being a unicorn is that you care because so many times when people have wounded you because you're not a freaking horse and, and they just don't get it. They don't get the beauty of being a fucking unicorn. So when you see that somebody is hurting or needs kind words, you know, some emotional support, You don't want to leave them hanging because you know what it feels like to be left hanging. So even though that person may have hurt me, they may be bad for my health, my mental health, you know, I I can't turn away. And I, I know a lot of INFJ, they, they would, they would definitely turn that person away, but I can't because I, a struggling person, I know what it's like, but I also think that that's part of what makes me a unicorn. And, um, I had told somebody earlier today, you know, how, how it's really hard for me to make friends and that the only people I really have in my life are my family and my exes. And then I said, because the the person was like, oh, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm friends with my exes because as it's really hard for me to make friends, but I don't make enemies. You know, that's, that's the thing. I may not make friends, but I'm kind, I'm loyal, and I will show up. So I don't make enemies. There may be people that don't like me. There's a lot of people that don't like me. There's a lot of people that don't get me. They don't understand me. And that's okay. Because I don't need a whole bunch of horses. I don't even know if I need another unicorn. I just need somebody who gets it. I need people who get it in my life. And, um, you know, so, so when you think about the people you meet, who you're just like, man, they're, they ain't right. Try to look past that and imagine that you're a unicorn in a world that wants you to be a horse. Imagine they've got this box built for you that you have to shove yourself into, contort, and be uncomfortable. How would that make you feel? Wouldn't you want somebody to listen and maybe make something that fits you? Make a space. Because if you're not going to hurt them, Why reject them?